Welcome guys to Rinaldi Studio Press. It's high time I did an edited content video from the live streams for my Railroad Boys. Uh, it's been a long time since I've really dived into the basic introduction uh, of oil paint rendering in the premise of what it's used for, my signature technique. I've been talking about it for 10 years in the hobby, coming from tank models. Doing a lot of this in the live streams and, and, and about a year ago really sat down with some cheapy little, went to the, the railroad uh, shop down the street and picked up some just off the shelf $10 engines to play with and, and to kind of demonstrate this uh, technique for you guys. And, you know, using the oil paint palette, using brushes, using multiple brushes and the type of brushes you want to be using, the type of thinners you want to be using, working with a paper towel and hair dryers to effectively apply layers how to mix paint and colors and work in a light to dark scenario as it as it re, uh, pertains to weathering you know how to use references when you when you look at the prototype photos uh, and i understand the railroading probably more than any other genre of, of a miniature scale modeling type of vernacular or hobby if you will uh, you're the most accurate in terms of replicating photographs and the prototypes as you guys call them um, and so this introduction video is really just about the topic of oil paint rendering in terms of what to do and I'm just getting the grounded idea so I know what I need to be doing. I'm not trying to, to, to replicate any of these right here at this point in time but really what I'm trying to do is just introduce uh, to a deeper level to you guys those that are unfamiliar and those that are trying to learn this uh, for your own projects. Particularly, this is 187 uh, but you can do this in N scale and you know it's, it's applicable actually to any scale in any genre but uh, here we're doing 187 uh, on this old war bonnet. I started with the light coat of airbrushing first, and the reason for that was I wanted to get that faded paint down there, uh, the faded fuel tank area, and get some light dust and, and, and stuff into the trucks down below before I started the oil paints. It's just a little easier to get the full-blown color effect for a more heavily weathered subject like this one was. When we work with oil paints in an OPR conversation, uh, the rendering comes from the fact that what you're doing is you're fully fleshing out the entirety of the weathering in a section by section process. That's what that means. That's why it's called oil paint rendering. And rendering is the same thing as it is a rendering in, in the 3D vernacular or where I come from the old school car design illustration process of, you know, vellum rendering, you know, for client work, uh, that kind of stuff. It's, it's the complete illustration for the viewer. So that's what the, that's what the rendering of the weathering is about. And then using of the oil paints is that they're the most flexible of all the chemicals that we have offered to us. You use the cardboard palette to suck out the linseed oil, and this basically gives us a really nice, workable, malleable paint uh, chemical to play with and, and to weather with quite effectively. On top of that, you would then use a series of, of high quality brushes. Uh, I've got them listed in the description down below. The ones I use are from King Art. Uh, it's a U.S.-based paintbrush manufacturer that they buy overseas, but the brushes themselves are excellent for weathering, in particular oil paint rendering. We use a lot of number two rounds, and the reason is they hold a good amount of paint and the bristles are outstanding, can withstand a lot of this type of work for a long period of time, and they uh, offer a tremendous amount of precision, which is what we really, really need. That's what we're after. Uh, being able to, to put this down in a precise manner the way we do, uh, you'll find in comparison to other brushes, the number two round from King Art is the original gold is, is exactly that, it's gold. So from there, uh, it's putting down the colors. And to do that, first thing you gotta do is understand your form, your function, brace yourself, you want control and precision. I recommend good eyewear as well. Uh, Optivisors if you're a little bit older and you need even better vision. Uh, this is cell phone camera video making, you know, zoomed in quite, quite closely. You can't really do that, at least it, in age, and, and you really kind of need some good good eyewear for this too. So don't discount that part of it. And also don't discount the paper towels. That's how you control how wet and how dry a lot of stuff is. And of course you have to use this hair dryer because what the hair dryer provides us, it's kind of, it, it, it keeps the process going. If we were to let this all air dry every time we did this, it would take forever. And those of you that work with oil paints in more traditional ways, it does take forever. So the cardboard palette pulls the linseed oil out, lets us, apply it easier, blends easier, and it dries dead matte. It also dries way, way faster. Hair dryer even speeds that even further. Hair dryer also applies a heat layer to it, and that kind of cooks it in there a little bit. And that allows us, as you can see here, to layer up new fresh oil colors on top of the previous layers. And that's how you get that light to dark weathering. And weathering, if you're unfamiliar, or if you're new to this conversation, is really a snapshot in time. Weathering is the story of the vehicle, whatever it is, whether it is an engine or a tank or a plane, Weathering defines uh, the age of the vehicle. 
And even with colors too, you know, you, you go way beyond dust and dirt and grease and grime and you get into colors of, in this case, it's, it's the Santa Fe colors. So I'm working with some pinks and some reds and some magentas here. Uh, and I'm mixing up my tones and I've got my little cup of thinner there and that's how I do that. I control that, I put on the palette, I mix on the, the color I'm looking for quite easily. Boom, done. And then the history of everything that you've done is on that palette. You keep using the palette. If you don't know, throw the palette in a little food container, Tupperware, whatever you call it. Put it in the freezer and you're done and it'll last for, for four to five weeks, no problem. You can keep using the reuse in the palette without wasting oil paint. But this conversation really revolves around a couple other application uh, protocols that you guys really need to, to embrace fully to get the maximum effect out of OPR. The first one is section by section. And that's kind of the, when you sit down, don't worry about anything else. Pick a place to start that you're comfortable with. Get your colors ready, you got your paints, you got your brushes ready, and you're gonna weather one section at a time. And in this case here, it's all broken down for us. There's panel lines, there's, there's, it's all there for us to do. All we gotta do is just sit down and work this one section out and figure out and solve what it is that we're trying to do. In this case, it's, it's to weather up this faded pink color. And oftentimes what happens with, with heavily oxidized paint is that when you scuff and when you scratch it, which is what I'm replicating with these brush marks, you pull out the darker original color underneath. And that's what you're seeing here. When you look at paint, you have a faded oxidized top layer. And then as you cut through that a little bit or wear it out or rub it with your clothes or whatever, your hands or whatever's going on, you'll pull that original darker color out as you wear off that top oxidized layer. So that's kind of what happens with paint in the, in the general context, especially civilian paint, especially when clear coats fade away after 20 years in service and all that kind of stuff. And you've got raw paint that is getting basically abused by mother nature pretty hard. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in the desert with Southern Pacific or you're, you know, in the Northeast. So, um, you know, you study your prototype photos and what I'm trying to do here is just get a general context of what I'm seeing right now. I'm not, again, I'm not trying to impress or go full blown one-to-one. -one. I'm just getting a general look to this machine while I teach the process on the live stream. That's kind of what's happening here. So, um, some other key elements that should be kept in mind is light to dark is a general overall uh, principle in which you guys can embrace. Now, I mentioned section by section, and the second part of that is the light to dark. And, and remember, I airbrushed down the light part already. So that is kind of, it constitutes that pink shade. So I don't have to apply that part with the oil. So even though my light to dark is more of a mid-tone, all the way through a really, really dark grease tone that we're gonna see here shortly, it's still a light to dark application. That's the kind of the, the basic understanding. And this keeps it simple for everybody, myself included. I don't need to rethink, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel with this, it's just, how do you weather? How do you make a machine look like it's been around for 20, 30 years and, and what we see in the photos, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the principle behind this, a very flexible chemical that's, that's favorable to, it's also non-toxic by the way. And, and, and if that's important to you, oil paint rendering is gonna be your go-to because it doesn't smell, there's, there's no toxicity here. Um, you know, you'd have, to, you'd have to basically ingest the stuff with, you know, with the straw to really make it, you know, do any harm to yourself. So that, those kind of things are really good. I've got the chemical list down below. I personally use Gamblin out of Portland, uh, Oregon. They're a great company and, and the products they take real seriously in terms of that health side of life, if you guys are, are interested in that as well. And then with that said, I do want to make sure that you guys understand the blending is probably going to trip up most of you. The application of the oil is, is probably fairly well understood, but it's the blending that really, if you're learning this and haven't really learned this or want to learn this, the blending phase is where things kind of get a little, a little dicey, if you will. The trick to this, and I'd recommend actually starting with almost basically a dry brush. The trick to it is, is that you see that there, that bristle is almost bone dry. There's already enough thinner in the paint mix on the palette that you've got going on. So to do this kind of work, when you blend it, like you see right here, that bristle is almost dry. That's the key to this. That's why the paper towels on top of which you, you apply the hair dryer in between every five, 10 minutes, cook this in there. This is how you move it along quite quickly. And in about an hour's worth of time, you can crank out a whole, you know, 25% of the surface in one night. And, you know, in the course of a week, you can probably do a whole engine, no problem. And it's even faster in end scale, you know, and that, that whole side of things too. So as you, as you get going here, uh, Understand there's 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 those principles of section by section, the light to dark, uh, dry blenders or nearly dry blending brushes really really helpful in terms of keeping the, the oils in control. Um, definitely have your references and if you are going for one to one prototyping, you know knock yourself out, 
work slowly. You have plenty of time. Uh, when you work with the oil paints, you have you know a good couple hours at any moment in time and probably a good day before you really have to worry about them locking in. Because of this application process, they will fully cure in about one to two days, which is fan also fantastic. And it is paint and they will hold up quite a bit. I know some of you are concerned about handling, you know, the physical handling of stuff. I would say you don't need to matte coat the whole thing, but if there's certain areas of, 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 of the stock or the engines that you're going to touch and handle a lot, yeah, you can throw a matte coat over that. It's only pigments are the one that you really have to worry about when you really matte coat on top of this. If you're looking for more of a display piece, it's kind of a, a real show piece for you in terms of actual one-to-one -one prototype references and weathered out when you got the variety of the sheens between old paint, polished steel and in, in, in lubricants that are greasy and, and all this kind of stuff, then I would not recommend a varnish. But if you're going to handle them for your layouts and other stuff, I would selectively say varnish here and there where you think you're going to be grabbing them quite a bit because it's oil paint. Once it dries, it's paint. It's just like enamel or lacquer and it's paint. It's That's what this is. So. Uh, there's no fear past that, you know, it's not going to hold up to, to a kid coming through and playing with it every day, but for, for, for grown-ups that are doing this uh, as a serious hobby, it'll hold up fine. That said, uh, the effects that you can get are as minute and refined as you want to go, and that's the beauty of this technique. It's a, it's a shit ton of fun, boys. I mean, this is there's no, there's no lie there. Um, scuffs and scrapes and fades and, and chips and scratches and rust and grease and grime. I mean, everything you want is right there for you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this introduction video. We'll get into this much deeper in the future. We'll do full-blown one-to-one prototype uh, weathering and future products. Stick around. Uh, and, if, and if you need to find more, click the playlist button. There's a railroad section there for you guys to, to dive into on, on this particular engine and, and a couple of uh, rolling stock as well. Thank you for your time. Take care.